All right, now that we have discussed the two types of energy that we're going to be working with, we need to talk about conservation of energy. And you've actually already seen this. So conservation of energy, it's very similar to what we've heard before, conservation of momentum, in the sense that it's the total energy that's conserved. All right, so if you remember our simulation with the three bars, and there was the PE, KE, and then TE, and the TE always stayed completely full, that's because total energy is always the same. It's all, it has to be the same amount always, all right? One slight difference is that we're gonna refer to total energy as ME, or mechanical energy. Okay, and I'll explain why in a second. But ME must always be the same number. So always the same number. Okay. Reason why we're calling it mechanical energy because mechanical energy is made up of kinetic and potential energy. All right, there are other types of energy like heat energy and things like that that are made from other types of energy that we haven't discussed. All right. Now, how mechanical energy is made up of these, if you remember the definitions, all right, potential energy is stored energy related to an object's position, how high it is above something. Because when you let go of that object, say you're holding a ball at the top of a building, when you let go of that object, that object starts moving, which means we have a velocity, which means as it falls down, Ke will increase, and then Pe will decrease. So the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Okay, and you can reverse this and throw something up in the air and it slows down and eventually comes to a stop. All right, but that's the idea. Something with lots of potential energy, once it starts moving, that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. All right, so let's see how this works. So let's talk about something falling off a building. So at the very, very top of the building, before we release it, it's really easy to calculate potential energy. So we have a 20 meter high building and an object with five, five kilograms of mass, okay? So let's answer the first question. What is potential energy before dropping the ball? So I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. And then our knowns for this one, we know that H is 20 meters. We know that mass is five kilograms. And even though it doesn't say it, we should always know that G is 10 meters per second squared. Our equation is gonna be PE equals MGH. And to solve, we'll have five times 10 times 20, which is equal to 1,000 joules. Okay, so this answer is 1,000 joules. Now, next question is what is kinetic energy before the ball? If you remember that Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared, and then think about if you're holding a ball up high, you haven't dropped it yet. What's your velocity? Hopefully you say zero. So if we plug in a zero in here for the V, then that's gonna give us a zero of kinetic energy. Okay, so Ke, at the very, very, very top, equals zero at the very top. Okay, and then it asks what is the ME, total energy? If you remember what it said on the other slide, ME is equal to KE plus P, which is gonna be zero plus 1,000, or 1,000 joules. To kinda make a all-encompassing statement here, at the top, ME, 
equals PE because KE equals zero. And that's true always at the very top of an object's path. Okay, if you throw it up or even if you're dropping it. And at the very, very, very top, the highest point it can reach, ME is equal to just the PE because KE is zero. So let's look at what goes on at the bottom. So again, we have the same object, same building, except this time our knowns are a little different because we're finding KE. So one thing that is a little tricky to wrap your head around is that whenever I ask you these questions, what's the velocity at the bottom? It is the moment, like the brief second just before it actually hits the ground and comes to a stop. Okay, so the height is zero. It's at the ground level. It's just it takes a moment to stop. The ground has to apply a force and actually stop the ball. So it's before any force is applied to slow it down, which means it's going to be at its maximum velocity. So at the very bottom, it's max velocity. It's not a velocity of zero. So let's do this. We know that mass is 5 kg. We know that V is 20 meters per second. And then our equation, Ke equals 1 half mv squared, which is going to be Ke equals one half times five times twenty squared or hopefully this number looks familiar a thousand joules all right the next question is asking what is PE at zero meters so at the very bottom you're at zero meters in height and if you look at our equation, it's PE equals MGH. If I plug in a zero for the H, what's going to happen to my PE? PE is going to be equal to zero. And then if we know that ME is equal to KE plus PE, and KE is 1,000, and PE is zero, then ME, once again, equals a thousand joules. All right, so we're seeing that ME stays the same, okay? You're also seeing, and a general assumption you can make here, is at the bottom, ME, equals Ke because Pe is equal to zero. Okay? So one more thing to make note of is that once you have figured out what Me is supposed to be and you're given enough information, you can find the energy at any point along the path. All right? So, in the middle problem. You could do this at 10 meters, you could do this at 9 meters, you could do this at 12 meters. All right, we're just going to do 10. And let's do it. So, ME, it's the same building, same situation. We know that that has to be 1,000 joules, OK? So from there, to try to figure out the other energies, we, this problem is set up to do this for you, but you can use your knowns to figure out which energy you actually have enough information to find. All right, so if you remember before, our mass is five kilograms. That's left over from the other page. But now our height is 10 meters and then g is still 10 meters per second squared. Since these are our knowns, the most logical energy to find first is PE. So PE equals mgh. 
or PE is equal to 5 times 10 times 10, or PE equals 500 joules. Okay. So to answer the next question, what is KE? We know PE is equal to KE, oh, sorry. We know that ME is equal to KE plus PE. Our total energy is always equal to the addition of the two other energies. So we know 1000 is equal to KE plus 500 or Ke equals 1,000 minus 500, which is 500 joules. And then, last question, now that we know Ke is not that difficult. We know Ke equals 500 joules. We know mass is 5 kilograms. We know Ke equals 1 half mv squared. Or if we want to rearrange that for v, it's going to be the square root of 2 Ke over m, which will look like 2 times 500 over 5, which is 1,000 divided by 5, and the square root, 14.14, and your units would be meters per second. Okay? So, some rules to live by when dealing with a conservation of energy problem. At every single point along the ball, the object's pathway, ME is equal to PE plus KE. That is always a true statement. That's always an equation that can be used if you know one energy and not the other. Okay? Another true statement is that ME is equal to PE at the top. All right? Or... ME is equal to KE at the bottom. Keywords being top and bottom. It's not... So at the very, very top, there is no KE, so everything is PE. At the very, very bottom, there's no height, so there's no PE, so everything is KE. Something else, and this makes a wonderful true-false question. PE is... Actually, rarely ever equal to Ke. There's one point where the height's in the middle, like in the problem that we did before, where they'll actually be equal to each other. Otherwise, one is always greater than the other. Okay? So not true. Pe is only equal to Ke at one point. Otherwise, they are always different from each other. So make sure you do the online form and bring your notes to class.